it's time for another show on Open Session Podcast. Today, we've got Lynn with us. Lynn's going to be sharing her story, telling her story of life. The trials and tribulations that each and, of, each and every one of us faces is varied. Today, it's Lynn's turn to share with us her thoughts. I see you double dot. Happy Friday to you as well. Let's uh, let's do our best to bring Lynn in. As everybody gets ready to hear the thoughts and feelings that Lynn has experienced as she tells her story. Today, Lynn and I will not be showing our faces. We will be respecting her privacy, but hearing her story. Here we go. How are you doing? I'm good. How about you? We made it, didn't we? Oh gosh, yes. <laughs> uh, you you thought to yourself, "Oh my goodness, this is not this is not working. Maybe this is not working." Um, I appreciate you uh, doing this today. Um, we wanted to make sure uh, that you felt emotionally safe to be here, uh, but uh, you do have some things on your heart and uh, on your mind that you'd like to share with others. Correct. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, we met via Twitter. I get the privilege to meet a lot of individuals through Twitter, many who will be joining the show as we go through our second season here. But I wanted to spend today with you and only you because, uh, well, you enjoyed the show yesterday. I think you were just mentioning that to me. Um, what were some things you enjoyed from the show yesterday at Narc Abuse TV? Well, I wanted to inform everyone that everything that she said as far as how the brain functions and how the cortex shuts down and things of this nature and the difference in childhood, you know, if they are loved and nurtured at five and those who are not, I basically had gone through all that and I'm blind today because of it. Wow. And um, basically, go ahead, please. I grew up in a very, I had a very good one to five years because I most of the time slept. And my mother was very uh, nurturing and she always wondered if there was something wrong. But beyond that, I had a very abusive childhood, teenage years. And then just recently, as my blogs indicated, the last 10 years because of a sexual assault. So she was talking, Leanne, about how continuous trauma can affect the body. And just the last 10 years or so, my blindness ended up being the cherry on top of far, as far as trauma, continuous trauma. Have you found yourself trying to understand the trauma that affected you? Or was oh. it something for you to easily understand how the trauma was affecting you? Uh, as a kid, you just grow up and easily understand. And you are able to manipulate. But when you are really hammered as far as harassment, it's really hard to control. And that's where uh, the intensity came at the end. You're, a, you're an author, you're an author, 
and a blogger. You're an author of children's books, If I, correct me if I'm wrong, and a scientific illustrator. Right. Um, shed, shed some light on these things, uh, your experience, um, and, of course, uh, your suffering with blindness. Um, we navigated We navigated pretty well, I think we did, right? Before, right. To get this show on, before the show, it took us a bit, but, hey, you know what? Good things take a bit, and we were able to meet with everybody today. And uh, you're indeed a trooper uh, to uh, follow my crazy directions for us to finally get on uh, to do this show. But uh, as an author, a scientific illustrator, uh, you have your page on Twitter. Um, you, you know, of course, uh, making your way to Instagram. Uh, you've been able to sit in on a number of shows and listen to what we do. Uh, but I want to know from your standpoint, as a blogger, an author, and a scientific illustrator what is your life like being blind and dealing with trauma very hectic very it's um when i paint or draw do illustrations i get very upset because of the unnecessary uh what i had gone through that was very unnecessary and it makes me upset that situations of narcissistic individuals that were involved in my life basically uh, had altered painting and writing and reading i you know i do feel very depressed sometimes and uh but i just go through it it's just one of those things how do you go through it there are people right now who have no idea what they're going through, who's causing it, let alone how to go through it. How is it that you go through it, Lynn? Well, basically, each day I wake up, I sometimes my sight is really bad, and sometimes it's very good. And when it's very good, I just keep painting, drawing, going through life like everybody else, and it makes it makes everything positive for the days that I don't have a good one. You know, I wake up with bad sight. And so that's basically my days. That's how they go. How did you come about being an author of children's book? That was my partner that I... Uh, I was with for seven years. He was a librarian and he always wanted to write books. And I was trying, he always had all types of notes, um, all kinds of ideas to write, but he wouldn't do it. And so I encouraged him by him and I collaborating on the first book, Sonoran Desert Frog, in which it brought him to realize how easy it is. And it's just a children's book. And we, he wrote the story, put it together. I did the illustrations. And he saw how easy it was. It made him go forward on his. Mm -hmm. But he never finished because he passed away in 2015. When you found yourself in a situation in which you were assaulted, How did you how did you get to this point that you and I are talking from that moment to now what has your life been like downhill it was downhill to the point where I had like sleep apnea you know the sleep mm -hmm. disorder uh -huh. uh, my dog actually woke me up because I quit breathing that's how low I was getting and um, I was on Twitter and I started uh, you know, reading stuff to see if maybe something, you know, just to keep myself busy. And I happened to run into Scott Allison's books. So when I started reading his articles and so on, something clicked. It was like, it was like I, all the things that I believed in that everyone was condemning me about was 
it was kind of like brainwashing. They were trying to condemn me. And I found out I was always right and it felt good. So it, it picked me up and I started moving forward. So you needed, you needed to find, you needed to find the right encouragement, the right, uh, the right yes. books to take a look at. Yeah. Have I, you, I found the have you right... changed? Go ahead. I'm have sorry. you changed your life drastically since you were assaulted? Was, I'm sorry, was it domestic violence or was it uh, 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 no, sexual it was, abuse? I apologize, no, I don't remember. I think you mentioned it to me. It was sexual assault. Uh, it changed my life dramatically that I became blind and I lost my partner. But I kept, and I lost my mother to cancer, and then I lost a bunch of other people in between. And... I, those books said just basically everything that everyone was condemning me about, I realized that I was always right. And I actually took at heart. And then when I realized what I did and what I was fighting for and the things that I, that was always positive, it wasn't me. It was just that I was dealing with a negative environment. How did you get yourself? How did you get yourself into a negative environment, or did the negative environment find you? Which it one? Found, it found me because I thought it was positive, and then as time went on, I realized it was negative, and I tried to get away from it. And the more I got got away from it or tried to fight it, for example, like put the guy, you know, try to get him arrested, then everything came down on me. You know what I mean? They tried. I understand. To, yeah, they tried to prevent. They tried to blame me is basically it. And then it just continued on. It was kind of like they were chasing me out of town kind of thing. I, I love your answer. That that was uh that was the that was the easiest setup question I think I've ever asked because you know some people think that they got themselves into a circumstance which can be the case but in your situation I love your response that it found you yeah that in actuality it found you but you found that the people you were around were not good for you. Right. How is it for you right now? Are you mostly by yourself? Do you find mostly. yourself uh, seeking the help or a, a, group, a group of people you can work with? Well, basically, I've just been working with, like, the books of Scott Allison and then Carla and Dr. Doyle. I read their Twitter, and I also read other publications, but I'm basically on my own. There is nobody else here because uh, this harassment has gone as far as my neighborhood there are people who continue but it's not as severe your choice to be on the show um well uh, i appreciate you being brave to want to talk about this um there are a lot of things of course uh, for those who hear this back uh, we, we won't be talking about in detail, um, but uh, hearing you today will hopefully give an opportunity to someone else to also want to tell their story. Yes. But what is it that you want to share with others that they need to keep in mind when it comes to abuse, narcissism, and just well, the things that you've gone through, what would you like to tell others? Uh, basically, I just want to make sure that people are aware that it has increased greatly, especially with COVID and stuff. And it, they should not take it so um, personal. I've gotten to the point where now it's gotten so severe that I don't take it personal anymore does that make sense and you, you reach a, you, reach you don't a take point, what you don't take what personal i don't take narcissistic behavior 
anymore. Personal. Because, yeah, because you personal, because you reach a point when it gets at you over and over and over, you reach a point where you're just saturated and it doesn't bother you no more. Mm. But you can lose yourself. You just got to realize when you reach the very bottom, don't go any further, you know, don't just realize and pick yourself up because you're going to find out as time goes on, it's just going to bounce right off of you and you're not going to want to, you know, put up with it. It's not going to hurt you as much. Not taking it personal is going to be beneficial because then we won't be absorbing uh, their negativity and we're able to live our life and be happy. Uh, Is that what you mean? Yes, basically. And it's for me, I'm considered an HSP, a sensitive person. That's why it was so dramatic for me. And those people out there are real targets for narcissism. And I just want to tell them that if you keep hanging on, you reach a point that they don't bother you anymore. You'll realize you will become more beautiful than they could ever be. You reach uh, a, a point that it's just, it, I don't know how to explain it. You're doing great. You're doing great. Well... It's, it's kind of hard. It's just like all this, you know, all the stuff that goes on. You think to yourself, why was I even in that position? When you realize how beautiful you become once you reach the surface. And, you know. You're doing great. Don't stop. That was awesome. That was awesome. Matter of fact, uh, uh, art for, a- for Annie, uh, uh, Anastasia. She said to you a little while back, I am very sorry that it happened to you. Uh, the things that you've been experienced, that was to you, Lynn. She was saying that to you. Um, I want you to know that, uh, again, telling your story is going to open the door for others. Um, it may not hit everybody this show, but it's going to mean something to someone else to want to come on here and tell their story, uh, whether Uh, incognito or if they want to show their face they decide but i appreciate you being the first one to come on here on open session podcast to be brave enough uh, to speak your mind this way Uh, this platform is made for the purpose uh, for others mainly victims and survivors of abuse to do just what you're doing right now uh, to have a platform in which they can come and and speak uh, their mind uh, briefly uh, or forever long as they need within reason uh, to say what they feel about what they've experienced and to say something encouraging to others. Um, so now I got to go and ask you this one. If you had to describe the Lynn that's talking right now and the Lynn that was five years old, What's the difference between the two? Oh, the only thing I could think of is probably age. Because I had to grow up fast. Wow. You know what I mean? I think the I, only th- I only think it'd be age because our thought process is the same. But, you know, I still run through sprinklers. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I didn't expect that one, Liz. That's really good. 